Hi everyone. Uh, we'll talk uh, about uh, building websites that will eventually work on Mars. So uh, before we begin, let's. Uh, this is my uh, second time on, web on webcam, but uh, this is my first time uh, that I'm talking here. So let's uh, meet each other. Uh, I'm Slobodan Stojanovic. I'm CTO of Cloud Horizon. So it's a small Canadian-Serbian uh, development agency, and we're doing some. Mm, I don't know, some cool things with different startups and things like that from North America mostly. And besides that, I'm organizing JavaScript meetups. Um, I'm also doing some open source things related to chatbots and some other cool things, so you can check my GitHub. And, uh, of course, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, before we continue, I would like to ask you a few questions so I uh, understand a bit better how, uh, I don't know, how well do you know this team and everything? So. Uh, was anyone from here on Mars? <laughs> no? <laughs> OK. So the next question is, uh, is Elon Musk in the audience? No? OK, cool. So then I guess I'm the expert, so we can continue. <laughs> OK, uh, first warning. Um, this is uh, not that technical talk, because uh, it's really hard to uh, fit everything in 20 minutes. And I'm completely aware that some of those things will not work uh, like I described them at the point when we colonized Mars. So let's start with probably the most important question that you have. And uh, not that one. <laughs> Why Mars? Why would anyone go to Mars or do anything on Mars? There's no people or anything, anything except few robots and things like that on Mars. So let's see what do we know about Mars. Uh, it's a planet. <laughs> that's, that's obvious. Uh, second thing that we know about Mars, sorry, uh, ap approximately uh, it's the same land mass as uh, Earth. It's much smaller, but uh, there's no oceans on Mars, so land mass, uh, land mass is uh, almost the same, so that's great. Uh, the next thing is uh, day on Mars is just 40 minutes longer than day on Earth. So, for example, our plants will uh, love that, and it's great to have 40 more minutes in the day when you have deadline or something like that, so <laughs> that works. Uh, year is almost twice longer. Uh, that's not that bad. Uh, for example, if you're Santa Claus or something like that, you'll have a bit longer vacation. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. Uh, temperature, it can be 20 degrees, so this is really good, right? Uh, gravity is uh, just... Uh, 30% from Earth gravity, so you can probably jump from second floor, and <laughs> you don't need <laughs> elevator for that. So everything is great so far. There's uh, signs of liquid water on Mars. That's great. We need water, of course. And beside that, there's a few other things. For example, there's two uh, moons, and uh, just imagine the sky on Mars. Uh, probably the largest uh, mountain in the solar system is on Mars, so everything seems to be great, right? But uh, there's a few problems. Uh, first one is that uh, just 18 missions from around 40 was successful. So we have still problems with transportation, but uh, that's something that we can solve. Uh, the second thing is temperature. <laughs> it can be a bit cold, <laughs> something like Canada or something like that. So, But don't worry, that's not the biggest problem that we have on Mars. Uh, there can be re really large dust storms on Mars that can cover the whole planet and can uh, last for a few months or something like that. So <laughs> that's not that perfect. But again, that's not your biggest problem on Mars. <laughs> There's a problem with radiation. And again, that's not the biggest problem on Mars. <laughs> There's no atmosphere, so <laughs> we're not able to breathe or do anything like that. So it's a bit challenging to live there. <laughs> so why would anyone go to Mars? Our planet is great, right? We, we have nice temperature. We have Oxygen, of course, and we have Wi-Fi, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's really great. Uh, but if you ask dinosaurs, it's not that great. From uh, every one, uh, once in a while, uh, there are some events that uh, cause some uh, mass extinction of the species on Earth. So, for example, one uh, we lost 75 percent of all species when uh, we lost dinosaurs, and the next one can happen. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe next uh, 100,000 years or later. But anyway, uh, we, we're building something here. And at some point, there can be some event that will just wipe out everything that we built so far. Of course, us too. So since most of us are in IT, uh, there's a simple solution, right? We just need a backup. <laughs> 
So. <laughs> but before that, let's, let's just imagine that you have some website. And uh, like those tricks with cards, let's just forget about that for now. We'll need that later. And I'll continue my story. So let's go back to Mars. Um, Mars is the only planet we know that is uh, inhabited by, by robots only so far. And uh, until one day in probably next 10 years or so, uh, this guy finished his huge rocket. And uh, of course, he bought some people on, in, on that rocket. And he sent that rocket. And uh, the upper part will go to the atmosphere. And the lower part will go back to the Earth. And then he'll send a few more things like that just to refuel that part in the atmosphere. And after that, he's planning to send those people to Mars. Uh, we'll probably forget about that for two months or something like that, and then we'll continue tweeting about that <laughs> the moment that they approach the Mars. And uh, we'll be in front of our computers, TVs, and everything. And at some point, they'll land on Mars. We'll have people on Mars in just 10 years. After some time, they'll send more people, and we'll have first city on Mars. And what's next? You know what, what this is? Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, uh, we'll, we'll do all those things on Mars. So we need all those things to, uh, to survive. And eventually, we'll build all those things to Mars, on Mars. And of course, we, we need one more <laughs> important <laughs> thing. <here. laughs> when we have Wi-Fi, there's another thing that <laughs> we'll have. <laughs> so you remember that, we, that you have some website. And uh, one day, you just receive a message like this. <laughs> and of course, you, you, you just ask how. Uh, I don't know. You need more info, because everything seems fine. <laughs> and then you receive a message like this. <laughs> 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 of course, you, you have no idea what's the problem. So what's the problem? You, you check your logs, you check everything, and everything seems fine. So, of course, you start Googling, because what other thing you can do? And you find out that the problem is with the distance, because uh, light needs between 3 and 25, uh, 22 minutes between the planets. So whenever we have some network request or something like that, we have a round trip between 6 and 44 minutes, if we can communicate, because planets can be on the opposite side of the sun or something like that. So. That can be a big problem. So OK, we have latency problem. How do we solve latency problem? We can probably just, I don't know, deploy to <laughs> some other AWS uh, center. But <laughs> they were still building their <laughs> new data center. So we need to find some different solution for that. OK, you tried. But so we need different solution. There, uh, of course. There's no <laughs> real-time communication, and I think that Matt Damon is not that happy right now, but uh, unfortunately, that's it. So let's see what can we do. Uh, what can we do when we don't have enough servers uh, in some area or something like that? Maybe go serverless, right? No, that will not work in this. So uh, let's see how do we communicate in Mars. Uh, sorry, not on Mars, but in space uh, in general. Um, <laughs> it's almost like this. Uh, actually, we are using radio waves. So the, the same radio waves that uh, you have in your cars or something like that. So basically, each spacecraft has some radio receiver, and uh, it's sending some radio messages. And uh, then we have huge receivers on Earth, and we are just uh, trying to catch all those messages. It's not that perfect, right? <laughs> They're working on building uh, interplanetary internet. Uh, this small GIF down there is just uh, to show you how, how much time do we need to, uh, how much time lights need to, to get from Earth to the Moon. Of course, to Mars, it's much, much longer. So how interplanetary internet works? It's based on some new protocols, and uh, it's, uh, they're called delay and disruption tolerant networking. Uh, they're uh, made for some mobile networks and some uh, extreme uh, terrestrial uh, environments, for example, North Pole and things like that. And of course, it's built for uh, communication in the space. Basically, uh, this is how normal networks work. Uh, we're just sending packages, re uh, receiving some acknowledge uh, sorry, acknowledgement that the uh, package is received, and that's cool. 
But uh, when we want to communicate in Mars, uh, those distances between nodes uh, can be really big, so we are not able to wait for. Uh, we need to store everything and try to send that to the next node. And eventually, we'll receive a new message, or uh, it will fail, and then we'll just wait and try to resend the message. Uh, of course, each node can store some, some amount of data. Uh, OK, we can work with that. But let's go back to web development, because we are much better with that than, at least I'm much better with that than, <laughs> I don't know, networking and everything. So uh, what can we do with uh, current technologies to build some website that will eventually work on Mars? First thing that we can do is to use service workers and to have offline access. Uh, I will not, uh, I will not uh, do a deep uh, overview of all those technologies because uh, we don't have enough time, but uh, I strongly suggest you to check offline. Uh, uh, actually, service workers, it's uh, basically just a proxy that stands between your uh, browser and the network. Uh, and you can, I don't know, you can just uh, cache some things, and you can uh, intercept some network requests and things like that. And instead of just uh, replying from server or something like that, you can reply from a local cache. So that's something that uh, is really cool for us. And uh, for example, things that you can build with service workers are offline experience. Uh, you can inter intercept networks, and you can uh, you have push notifications, so that's cool. You can uh, notify someone that uh, something new is available or something like that. And there's a background sync API. There's much more things than that. Uh, this is some um, basic uh, code that uh, will allow you to, to run service workers. Uh, it's not working still in all browsers because we, we have problems with some of them, but eventually they will <laughs> just uh, make it work. Uh, the second problem that we have is a uh, large number of um, API calls because uh, we don't want to send uh, too much uh, I don't know, network re requests because we have a huge latency. So we can use something like Graph, uh, GraphQL or something like that. So instead of sending 10 different uh, API calls or something like that, we can send just one and get all data that we need. So that, that should work better. But uh, for example, GraphQL is, ju uh, is just a simple query. Uh, string uh, that you send to a server, and you get exactly the same thing from the server. So you can specify what do you need. That's great. But when we have some data, uh, how do we store that data on the in your browser? You can use things like IndexedDB. There is also local storage, but uh, that's for smaller amount of data. And uh, IndexedDB is uh, just a low-level API for client-side uh, storage. So it's it's probably not great if you want to, to write directly things with IndexedDB. API is really not great. But uh, there's a bunch of tools, that are, a bunch of other libraries that are built on top of IndexedDB. Uh, and IndexedDB is basically just a key value store. And uh, it, uh, of course, it's no SQL. It use, uh, uses uh, DOM events to notify you that some data is uh, available because it's uh, asynchronous. And uh, it's built on transactional database model. I will not show the code for that because API is really not that great. But uh, there's a, fortunately, there's a thing like, uh, for example, PouchDB. So basically, you have a uh, database. In, uh, you have a tool that uh, it's an open, uh, open source JavaScript database inspired by CouchDB. So you have a full API. Uh, like uh, CouchDB in your browser, and it's uh, it's made to, to sync really well with the, with the server with remote CouchDB or PouchDB or something like that. So uh, the idea is to just uh, store data on your local machine, and whenever you have connection with the server, you'll just sync everything with uh, with your server. And it's really easy to use it. It's just uh, syntax is really simple. If you compare it to IndexedDB, it's really great. There's some other tools that, uh, if you don't like CouchDB or th uh, things like that, there's uh, more other tools that are built on top of IndexedDB. Um, beside that, I mentioned background sync. Why do we need background sync? Uh, sometimes we don't have internet connection. So if someone closed the browser or something like that, if uh, your uh, API call is not sent to the server, uh, it will never happen. So we have background sync to help us with that. And we'll, it will just uh, defer those actions until we have a stable internet connection. And uh, again, it's not hard to use it. It's just uh, s service workers. But uh, 
it would be really cool if we can just do the same with files. Because, for example, if you're on Mars, and if you try to download something, it will take ages. And uh, basically, uh, this is still not implemented, but there's, uh, there's a thing that uh, there's just proposition to upgrade service workers and everything with uh, with the ability to download uh, and upload files in the background. So uh, if you close your browser, it will just defer that to your operating system. And when it's finished, it will be able to, to send you a push notification or something like that. So that seems like a good thing to do because, uh, for example, you want to download the movie. And after, I don't know, a few hours or a few days, uh, you'll just receive a push notification. And that's. Uh, that's something really cool that we can use. And we have lost Matt Damon here, but <laughs> let's, let's go to something that is really, really interesting, uh, most interesting to me right now. It's peer-to-peer -peer connection. And we can do that with uh, WebRTC. Uh, so basically, WebRTC is an open source project that provides, uh, uh, that provides mobile and web applications with real-time communication. And uh, you can do a few different things. For example, you can. Uh, you can do media streams. Uh, for example, you can uh, use audio or camera stream or something like that, your peer-to-peer -peer connection. So you don't need to send everything to a server. You can send that directly to a person that you're communicating with. Beside that, uh, the most interesting part for us is uh, RTC data channel. So instead of just sending uh, audio or, uh, or video stream, uh, you can simply send any kind of data. And why that's uh, important for us? First. It's really cool to, to use that directly, but beside that, uh, it allowed us to, to build some cool tools like WebTorrent. So we have a complete torrent, uh, BitTorrent uh, implementation directly in your browser. You don't need to download any application or anything like that. You can just uh, use the magnet link and uh, download uh, directly in your browser any, any other file that any other peer have. So it's uh, completely written in JavaScript. And uh, there is a great explanation why they did that. And uh, so just imagine that you uh, want to build peer-to-peer -peer uh, YouTube, that you don't need servers or things like that. So that's exactly the thing that we need on Mars. We will not have enough servers in the beginning, so we need something like this. Uh, and again, it's really easy to use for some simple use cases. It can be much more complicated for some not so trivial use cases because browser support and things like that is not perfect yet. And uh, if we can send media things, why wouldn't be, uh, we be able to send just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? We should be able to do that. And meet Hyperdrive. Hyperdrive is basically just the library that uses uh, WebRTC to connect you to some other peers. And uh, it's built for just uh, sharing uh, files. So just imagine distributed uh, Dropbox without servers or anything like that. So uh, if you want, some other people can have parts of your Dropbox or something like that. So you can get data from, uh, from them or send data from your machine. And uh, for example, that is based on that. And Hyper, uh, Hyperdrive is... Uh, based on two different uh, things. First one is Hypercore, and it's just a protocol for uh, communicating and sending. Uh, uh, it's working on append-only logs, so it's, uh, you can just add things. You're not able to remove things from that. So, And beside that, uh, the other part is Hyperdrive. That's just a file system built on top of that. And uh, those two in connection are used uh, for that. That is a project that uh, is doing exactly that. It's just, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. Uh, it's just uh, used uh, for uh, distributed uh, file sharing network. And uh, they're mostly focused on, the, on science use, but you can use that for uh, any other ki kind of project. So just imagine that you have some React uh, application or something like that. So you have application shell that is just uh, cached with, uh, offline, uh, with service workers, and it works offline. And then, for example, any of you have some application that I need, instead of just downloading that, part, uh, that application from, from the network, I can just load uh, some kind of React application from you and display that inside my application shell. So we can build distributed uh, app store or something like that without having any servers or things like that. Of course, we can use servers just to, to back up that. But uh, beside that, uh, 
it will be easy for us to share things. And we don't need the uh, complicated server in infrastructure that we have right now on the Earth. Uh, we can just have distributed uh, environment for all those things. Besides uh, that, uh, there's other projects that are doing the same things. For example, interplanetary file system. It's a really cool thing. Uh, it's uh, a set of protocols that allows you to do a similar thing, to just share files in a distributed way. So it's called interplanetary file system because you should be able to use it anywhere, even on Mars. You can do the same things and load sites directly for, uh, from IPFS. So I suggest you to check that project too. So uh, are we solved all the project, uh, problems that we have? Uh, no, no, we didn't. First, there's a problem with timestamps. As I said, uh, day on Mars is not the same as a day on Earth. So we need some timestamps that will work everywhere. Or we don't need timestamps, who knows? Maybe we need something completely different. Then, how do we store sessions? Then? How, we, how do we exchange sessions between the planets? Most of the time, we don't need that. But just, for, uh, just imagine that someone wants to log in in uh, his Facebook account from Mars. How, how, how that uh, can work at all? Besides that, there's security and privacy. In the beginning, you'll have just a small amount of people on Mars. So we'll probably uh, don't care about security, privacy, and things like that. But after some time, we need to, to find a solution for that. And we need to find a solution for distributed uh, security and privacy, not just on this planet, but probably on a few other planets, and who knows. And of course, uh, how, do you, how do you test those things? Because how, how do you run your test suite or something like that and simulate Mars or any other planet? So uh, those are just some of the problems that we'll have. And uh, let's see the message of this talk. Uh, well, this was not planned. <laughs> so uh, what's the point of this talk? It's the point that we now can build some distributed uh, Instagram so Matt Damon can share the uh, photos of his food or something like that. No, it's not. The point of this is that right now we are building applications that are not working perfectly even on this planet. And soon, in just uh, probably 10, 20, 30, 50 years, we'll be we'll need to build some applications that will need to be distributed to uh, different planets. So we need to, to find a different way of writing applications just to, to be able to run them in some uh, extreme situations and in some completely new context that we'll have soon. And that's all for me.